Hey everyone, Nick Marzinski here at TrappingLight.com. In a previous video, I talked about how you could soften skin using a technique called an inverted high pass layer. And when you did that, you ended up with something that looked like this. And I had said, well, there's a lot of color contamination that you've got uh, down here, uh, for example, on the lips and over here on the eyes. And the way to deal with that is to double click on that layer uh, and then use a blend if, uh, deal with the blend if sliders, hold down the, uh, the alt or option key and then drag the black slider on this layer over until the color contamination goes away. And there, once you've done that, then you can just simply mask in the effect. And that works great, but here's the problem. It works great only if you're using a copy of Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, the full version of Photoshop. If you're using a program like Photoshop Elements, you're not going to necessarily have, you won't have access to uh, these blend if sliders. And so the problem is, is that then if you go through all of the other steps in the inverted high pass, uh, a skin softening method, you end up with something like this, which is really not as good as it could be in terms of softening skin because you have this color contamination. And if you try and mask it in, let me just show you what happens. If I grab my brush and you can see as I'm masking that in, I've got the contamination of the color below it. So this is, is clearly not the best thing that, uh, that can be done. So what we have to do if you're using elements to do this, and I'm just going to delete this, um, uh, is you have to be able to come up with a way to do a workaround where you can get the same sort of effect as, a, as, as manipulating a blend of slider, only doing it without having a blend of slider that you can work with. And there's a way to do it. And I'm going to spend the rest of this tutorial talking about how you can pull off an effect like that, like using a blend if slider in Photoshop Elements where you don't have that. And the way that you're going to do that is by creating a layer mask that is similar to the kind of effect that you would get if you did um, blending using a blend if slider. So here's how to do that. Okay. Let's go back to the original image that we've got. We've gotten all of our retouching done on this image. And so at this point, we want to run a skin softening filter on it, okay? Now, if we were doing this in Photoshop, Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, you would make one stamp visible using Control, Shift, Alt, and E, or Command, Shift, Option, E if you're on a Mac. And then you would be running uh, all of your skin softening effects on this particular layer, on this new layer that you've created at the top of the layer stack, okay? If you're doing it in Photoshop Elements, what you're going to need to do rather than having only one layer you're working with is you're going to have to create two. So you're going to just hit that Control Shift Alt E again to create two different layers. And the first layer on the bottom, we're going to call that the Soften Skin layer. Okay, so I'm going to rename that. And that's the layer where I'm going to be doing all of the skin softening, uh, running all the skin softening filters on it. The layer above it, I'm going to call um, uh, the masking layer. And that will make a little bit sense, a little bit more sense um, when uh, I get a little further into this tutorial. So. The first thing that I'm going to do on this, I'm going to disable the masking layer. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the softening skin layer. So I'm going to do all of the normal steps that I would do in order to run an inverted high pass. I'm going to change my blend mode to linear light. I'm going to invert the layer by pressing Control or Command I. Then I'm going to go up to my filters. I'm going to run, go down to other, high pass, run a high pass filter with a radius set around 20 to 25 pixels. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to go back up to filter again, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur and run a Gaussian blur filter with a radius set somewhere between three and five pixels. Okay. So I've got my softened skin layer and I've got it the way um, that it, that it looked at the beginning of the tutorial, except of course, for this color contamination that you can see here on the bottom. So now we've got to work on masking that color contamination out. And here's where we start using the masking layer. Okay, this masking layer is the exact same as the softened skin layer, only it's it's not, um, it's 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 it incorporates all of the edits just like the softened skin layer does. Only we haven't run uh, the mask on it, 
or we haven't run all of our um, softening filters on it yet. And we're not going to. What I'm going to do with this layer is I'm actually going to use it to create a layer mask that I can then apply to the softened skin layer that I've already created in order to replicate that blend if slider function that you have in Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud. In order to do that, what I'm going to do on this masking layer is I'm going to use a gradient map. So I'm going to go down to my Add Adjustment layer and click Gradient Map. Okay, Gradient Map brings up the editor. I'll click on the editor. And the preset that I'm going to want to use is Black White. At this point, I'm going to want to create another black point here. And I'm going to want to start dragging it to the right in order to black out more of the image. Now, it's very important when you're doing this to keep the skin relatively white okay because what this step is designed to do is it's designed to make a layer mask without you having to actually draw build a layer mask in we're actually going to use this gradient map as a layer mask and i'll show you how that works in a minute but because of the way that this works it's 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 one of those techniques where if you mess up with doing this gradient editor, you have to pretty much start all over. So it's important to get it right the first time. And um, that's a little bit different than using those blend if sliders in Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, because you can go back to that as often as you want. With this technique that I'm showing you that works in, in, in Photoshop Elements, if you mess up at any point in the process with this masking layer, you have to create another um, stamp visible layer, another stamp visible masking layer, and pretty much start all over. Okay, so in this case, I've got my skin. It's fairly white. There's a little bit of dark in there, but that's okay. That's I, I don't want it to be completely white. I want it to just be white enough where when I create a mask, that area is going to be um, fairly visible on a layer mask. So I'm going to click OK. At this point, now that I've got my gradient map and my masking layer, I'm going to select both of these layers and I'm going to merge them. So I'm going to right click on my mouse and I'm going to select Merge Layers. So that's going to merge these two layers into a single layer that's called Gradient Map 1. At that point, I've got my layer mask. So what I've got to do now is I've got to go up to Select, or excuse me, go up to, uh, yeah, Select. Click Select All. I'm on this Gradient Map layer, so I'm selecting the entire Gradient Map layer. Go to Edit and go to Copy. So now I've made a copy of this layer. At that point, I've got a copy of this layer, which is a black and white layer, the same as you would have with a layer mask. So what I want to do now is I want, now that I've copied this layer with its blacks and its whites, its monochrome nature, just like a, a, a layer mask, I want to go back onto this softened skin layer. And now at this point, I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. It's going to add a fully white layer mask. And I've got to select this layer mask and hold down the Alt key. And when I do that, it changes the view so that what I'm seeing on my screen is this layer mask. Everywhere it's white is where the layer is showing, and everywhere it's black, that's where it's being covered up. Because now I'm working directly on the layer mask, I can go up to Edit, click Paste, and if you look at my layers palette here, you can see what it's done, which is that it's pasted the image that I've copied from this gradient map onto my layer mask rather than onto the actual layer. So now I've created a layer mask that has all of the elements that, that you would have if you were using a blend if slider, meaning that you're blending, you're creating a mask that's, that's where you can set what is blending on a range from very, very light to very, very dark. Using that gradient map, I've been able to do that here. So if I disable this layer now, you can see that a lot of the color contamination that you've had here is completely gone. If I hold down shift and turn the layer mask off, you can see the difference. And it's rather striking in terms of the fact that a lot of the problems that we had, a lot of the defects that we have here with this original version are no longer present because we've created this um, this layer mask. At this point, the gradient map that you've had up here, you can just simply get rid of. You don't need it anymore because you've got this layer mask here. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this, um, this layer here and you're going to want to apply the layer mask. So you're going to, let's try this, right click on the layer mask and click apply layer mask. 
This again is a point at which if you mess up, then you're going to have to turn around and do a lot over again. So it's important to make sure that you are happy with what you've got. Once you apply the layer mask, you can see that effectively what it's done to this layer here, if I just disable everything else except this layer, is that it's applied that skin softening just to the areas where it was light on the layer mask. And everywhere where you can see this checkerboard pattern, that uh, skin softening has not been applied. Okay, so now you've got this new layer where the skin softening looks fairly acceptable. At that point, now I can add a layer mask. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do rather than doing that is I'm going to add a black layer mask by holding down the Alt or Option key when I click the layer mask. And now I've got my layer mask and I can go in with a white brush and start painting in. my um, softened skin and I won't have any problems with um, with color contamination at all because I've already basically masked out all of those contaminating areas using the uh, using the technique that I outlined before and I'm, I've obviously done a fairly quick job here um, but it just to give you an idea of how this works when you don't necessarily have access to the tools that you would have in full Photoshop. You've got to create a workaround. And in this case, by creating a new layer, making a gradient map of that layer, and then merging them, copying that, and then pasting it to the layer mask on the softened skin layer, you've effectively managed to replicate a blend if effect that you could get in full Photoshop only using the tools that you have available in Photoshop Elements. So for those of you that are wondering how you can accomplish the softened skin effect in Elements, this is how you can get the masking done and get rid of the color contamination. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them on my blog at trappinglight.com or on the YouTube channel. Again, my name is Nick Marzinski. Thanks for watching.